Hi, welcome to everyone's favorite segment, Mailbag. Yes, I'm back in the old lab, and yes, as promised, I've got the backdrop. We're inside another lab. Yeah, sure, Dave. Um, this one is Ian Johnston's lab. You might know the name, Ian Johnston, who's uh, sent stuff in the mailbag before, in particular, the voltage reference standard. So this is his lab where he actually uh, designs, builds, and calibrates, and uh, assembles, I guess, the voltage calibration standard. So it's ianjohnston.com. Link it in down below and check it out. So. I don't know if this works that great yet. I can't see as much of the bench as I was hoping to see. I guess I could work with the camera angles a bit. The camera's way back there, like three meters away or something, just to get the angle required for bloody hell. Bloody screensaver bullshit. <sighs> I fixed that bastard. Anyway, let's take a look at the lab. We've got a classic, uh, HP, I guess, Agilent on a key site, uh, 3458 or 3458A, the classic uh, eight and a half digit multimeter. And if it's good enough as the transfer standard in key site's own calibration facility, which I've done videos on, by the way, um, then it's good, more than good enough as a transfer uh, calibration standard in Ian Johnston's lab or anyone's uh, lab for that matter. It is the classic device for uh, you know transfer standard for calibrating multimeter. I mean, it, it, it's a multimeter, but people use it as as a like a calibration reference standard so you can see some of the voltage references over here I spy um, the same what looks like the same Stanford research uh, dual channel analog filter that I've got to done a repair video on that not quite sure what that is we've got an old HP uh, multimeter up here what else we got uh, as old-school power supply ah, real analog meters winner winner chicken dinner that looks like a frequency count I can't quite I don't have the resolution on here to read it Got a couple of Keithley multimeters here, winner, 34461A, Keysight's new uh, replacement for the 34401A. Uh, we've got electronic load down here. Um, these are interesting, circuit specialist power supply. Check out the screw terminals on here. None of that binding post rubbish. Good old fashioned metal screw terminals, love it. Anyway, uh, Keysight, that looks like a uh, 3000 series, is it? Got to have a second scope, so I've got a Rigol. And what is that? Puppy, that's, oh, that, that, that's a function gen. And those weird ass pommy plugs, look at that. Uh, JBC iron down there, absolutely fantastic. So there you go, thank you very much Ian for sending in your lab photo. And if you wanna see your lab, I, I've got, I'm gonna have one more today uh, coming up later, so stick around. But if you want your lab in the background here, then it's gotta be, send it to me as high a resolution as you can get, as well lit as you can get, and shot at an angle that it kind of sort of appears like I'm actually in there. And also, please make it 16-9 aspect ratio. Otherwise, I've got to crop it, which I did with this one. Anyway, details down below for that, uh, and tell me how you want to be credited and all that sort of jazz. Anyway, let's get to it. I do have a leftover one from a last time. Lee, so sorry. It's really lightweight. Wow, it's nothing in it. Um, uh, Don... Uh, Don Pablo, I guess, he's a bloody Queenslander from Australia. Um, affectionately, of course. Um, yeah, that's what we call Queenslanders, bloody Queenslanders. Can't beat us at bloody footy, though. Love having space in the lab. I can just throw stuff. Beautiful. It's a lot of bubble wrap, which is great. I can always reuse bubble wrap when I'm packing and shipping stuff. Okay, it's taped up. Jeez, must be really important. Let's look what we got. What, what do we got? We've got JBL headphones, wireless, JBL, I get, yeah, Bluetooth. Let's have a look, it, it may not be it. It could be something else in here. Yeah, it's empty on top, yep, no, there's nothing. There's literally nothing. Uh, wah, 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 wah. I don't have my buttons here, I haven't brought them over yet. Um, it's like, um, it's empty. It's the first time I've received a box. It's kind of a nice box. We can talk about the box. Look at this. It's, you know, um, yeah, this multi-layer thing. It's got integrated uh, cardboard, you know, corrugated, um, well, not corrugated, but two things up there that hold that in place. It's got a little tray. It's got the requisite stuff. That's a decent design box, actually. Don't mind that, but um, uh, yeah, I don't get it. Well, so yeah, bloody Queenslanders indeed. Anyway, I guess that's funny, sending an empty box, okay. 
Um, anyway, another another one from Australia. Bloody ripper. Uh, Jaden Carslake, thank you very much. Uh, from Belmont in Western Australia. Australia. Hi to all my Western Australian viewers. So let's give this a burl. So let's see what Jaden sent in. That wasn't a note, was it? No, I don't think so. Anyway, let's have a look. More audio. Jeez, we've got a theme. Um, these are um, uh, Bluetooth um, earbud things not a fan of earbuds not a fan at all so these are um yeah these newfangled things you see these hipsters wearing with the i don't know well it looks like i've got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff or miscellaneous bits i guess we'll find out why in a minute uh it's taken something apart here we go all right so it looks like it's pre-torn down Ah, uh, it's one of these googly um, things, and not not the Google one, but bloody speakers. Look, uh, duh, separate like that, otherwise they go, oh, like that. So yeah, it's something is already pre-torn down. It's one of these, uh, you know, yeah, speaker. No, yeah, that is a Google um, a Google thing. Um, yeah, I've got one of those. I was going to tear it down. They sent it to me. Google sent it to me for free. They sent me an email. I was saying, do you want one of these things for free because you're a YouTuber or something? I said, no, yeah, whatever. I might be able to. I'm not going to plug it in. And who uh, might be able to use it for something. Um, I'm a long time fan and a bunch of stuff torn apart, but nothing to do with them. As such, I am passing them on to you. Hopefully you can make something to do with them. Uh, there are five speakers, two Bose, one Google Home Mini. That's what I was thinking of. And two generic Shenzhen market specials. There's also the remains of a Google Home and a set of cheap wireless earbuds that do barely work. <laughs> yeah, okay, Sound Republic. Um, yeah, what are they, you know, five bucks delivered on AliExpress? And yes, these are all the parts that actually came in it. And Jaden's plugging his um, freelance IT support um, skills as well. <laughs> as he said, oh, have I sent in a resume? Anyway, um, yeah, all right, we'll take a quick squeeze it. Oh, he's ripped the cans, he's ripped the cans off. So this is inside one of these Google Nest mini things and never use one of them. Don't plug one of these bloody all seeing or well, all hearing uh, devices. India network like really do you need to go hey Google Google me something I mean give me a break anyway um they're um I assume that they're lead pipes light pipes going from the leads on the yep there they are yep leads on the back of the board so that sits in the top there somewhere we've got four leads they shine through the front I guess um you know you don't want them to be too bright so that's uh that's pretty good. So you've got your electronic-y doodads, and then you've got your, well, your speaker. I thought the speaker came out the top. Oh, right, yeah, I thought the speaker would be in the top like that, but it's it's not. Um, it's all, it looks like it all comes out the sides around there. There you go. That's interesting. So, yep, board in the top. Looks like, and does that, I assume, does that go down like that? Yeah, it's got to, yeah, it'd go in like that. Of course, you wouldn't normally have that poking up into your cone there. That just looks like a pretty ordinary how you're doing speaker. And, um, and the back case goes on. Ah, but hang on, we have what looks like, that looks like magnesium alloy. Why well, you could scrape some of that off and burn it if you wanted to, to see if it is. But, uh, nice little spike there. Um, how does that... How does that go? Does that... That's the go. There you go. So, ah, oh, it sits in the spike. It's some acoustic -y spike thing. There you go, which is supposed to disperse the sound evenly all the way around all your vent holes around there. There you go. I guess that'd work all right. So, at least they've put some thought into that, haven't they? So that's reasonably well constructed. That's inside the Nest Mini. Uh, do we care about the chips? I mean, you know... Really? We all know it's got permanent spyware in there anyway, so meh, whatever, I'm not. For once, I don't really care about what's uh, inside the electronics on this thing. I'm just more interested in to see the construction, really, but yeah. Ugh. Hands up in the comments down below if you use one of these bloody stupid things. Probably the same people who have, like, smart light bulbs and control them from this stupid shoe phone. Now, well, this is a speaker fest. Two generic or oh, Shenzhen market, or are these the Shenzhen market specials? That looks like just a generic uh, Mylar dome in there. Well, hey, there we go. Cracked it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, just the Mylar dome jobby. Nothing special. 
And aha, they're the two Bose ones for you Bose fanboys, made in Mexico, quite all my Mexican viewers. I'm not sure how many Mexican viewers I have, but you know, geez, look at that, that is like, su that is ridiculously deep. That is super deep. Look at that, you know, the, the throw on that is amazing for the size. What is that? Like barely an inch across and like, <laughs> it's just enormous throw. Unbelievable. Speaker technology is actually coming you know, a long way, especially like, you know, to get like a speaker that actually sounds half decent in a mobile phone is just like insane. Like you couldn't imagine uh, that technology 30 years ago. It was just nuts. Oh, they don't like each other. Woo! And these stupid ear pod things. I don't know. Why do you want another thing that you got to charge? You know, use a bloody cable, for goodness sake. I know, like, you know, the stupid new iPhones don't even have uh, headphone ports anymore. Well, that just popped off. Um, there's your little piss ant speaker, and there's your little lithium ion or lithium polymer. Sorry. About, oh, puffy. <laughs> puffy as look at that <laughs> did it ever look like that or is that is that gone puffy <laughs> oh jeez so the battery's hidden behind the speaker there and the board is just tucked tucked away down in there so i guess that end pops off there we go <laughs> that's the way to do it we don't care about ah oh yeah there we go Come here. Ah, pull it there we go got it oh beauty look at that there's our antenna and there it is. Can we read that chip on there? I don't think I'll bother to get data on it. And sorry, I just realized that I had my microphone pointing forwards instead of pointing behind the camera. Oops, um, so the audio up until now has probably been crap. So sorry about that. Anyway, there you go. Um, is, is, that a little, is that a little microphone? Do these things have microphones? I don't know, I don't use these stupid ear pod things. And nothing on the other side. Oh, there you go. So thank you very much, Jaden, for sending in all those bits and bob audio devices. I was going to tear down my Google Home Mini, now I don't have to. Um, there you go. Fascinating. Thanks, mate. Oh, you know I get excited about flat printed dead tree material. Um, fantastic. Thank you very much, Wayne Clay. Hold on. Hi to all my viewers in the old dart. Um, it just says sales brochure. So, ooh, fantastic. Uh, better open this one carefully. No, no, it's nothing at the top. I think I can just do that. That was careful. I know what I'm doing. I'm professional. It's all right. I'm from Australia. Oh, what do we got? What is it? I don't know. It's well protected. Thank you. Oh, 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 wow. It's the Sinclair C5. See, I can't hold stuff up to the, um, the camera anymore. That's really annoying. The Sinclair. It's just because I need the angle for the screen. Oh, that's a downside to this. Anyway, um, the Sinclair C5 brochure. Oh, look, it's got the original priority free post reply envelope in it. Oh, the, oh thank you very much. This is awesome. I was thinking with a couple of week, months left on my two and a half months now left on my old lab. My old lab has room to do a Sinclair C5 teardown and retrofit. I can do it in the bunker, but you know, it's just nicer in the lab. Um, I've got new lighting in the bunker, by the way. So, oh, look at the, oh, look at this. Oh, it exploded. Oh, I'll show you. Oh, the motor. Oh, it's, it's, it's pornographic. Can be demonetized. Oh, and it's the original letter signed by Sir Clive himself. Well, I don't know if it's like actually individually signed by Sir Clive, but it's in a different colour. It's got to be legit. Um, at last, the Sinclair electric vehicle, and you have priority. Please find and close the Sinclair C5 sales brochure circle at circa 1985. I knew I had one in my life. Sent it off for, <laughs> off for it whilst and while he was at school. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Finally looked at it whilst being on lockdown. Awesome. Thank you very much, Wayne. <laughs> Let's have a squiz at the Sinclair C5 brochure. <sighs> oh. And check this out, Sir Clive Sinclair, the Sinclair C5. Doesn't it look so fantastic? I've, I own one and, well, you know, it doesn't look as schmick in real life, but sure, my ones are 
you know, quite old. But yeah, don't they make it look absolutely fantastic in the brochures? <laughs> they really, wow, so futuristic. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> was the future of Sir Clive Sinclair's future of trans personal transportation. And yeah, everyone said they were so low profile to the ground, everyone started getting run over in them. So they had to add the big uh, optional flagpole at the back. So if you valued your life, you bought the uh, you bought the flagpole. Oh, yes. <laughs> no road license, no road tax. Even 14-year-olds can use it. Fantastic. And you put your groceries in the back. Look at that. <laughs> Trust me, there's not much room there, really. But uh, yeah, doesn't it? The brochure really sells this thing. Battery, rechargeable battery, takes you up to 20 miles uh, for less than 5p. To <laughs> That's pence for you uh, uh, Yanks who probably don't understand foreign currency. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, doesn't look sophisticated in his suit. Driving, you know, and a whole fleet of, look, in one car parking spot, you can fit five Sinclair C5s. Oh, that's... And, <laughs> Classic 80s hairdos, oh, terrific. Go to your sport, you know, your kids can drive it to their uh, sports field for their you know, soccer practice or whatever. And, oh, terrific. Uh, lifelong, uh, long life running test. There you go. There's some of the uh, test jigs that they had to, chassis strength test rig. Wow, some of the test rigs they use. That's that's fascinating. There you go. wonder if uh, anyone still has any of those. Wow, look at that simulated load testing wow so that would actually press down on it and to simulate you know big fatties riding this thing and uh, like over so you can do, that's wow gone to a bit of effort there to simulate all that there you go there's an exploded view of course it doesn't look as sophisticated when you realize it's got pedals inside i wouldn't be showing that <laughs> so it looks a little bit more toy like there i, I wouldn't have shown that oh but look at the motor oh <laughs> <laughs> looks fantastic. That cutaway view just, oh, that really sells it. Oh, so powerful and sophisticated electric motor in this thing. Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty piss weak when you actually drive the thing. But anyway, um, deep discharge battery included. 19 foot turning circle. There you go. Sophisticated lead bar graph display, <laughs> which used a, uh, a gate array uh, logic chip, I believe, to actually do that, you know. Pretty advanced uh, Sinclair back in the day, but uh, and the optional rain, <laughs> the rain jacket and the <laughs> rain cover. That's <laughs> wow, so glamorous. And the technical specifications. Oh, how to order? Order. Would you like to order one? Uh, yeah, 428 pounds. There it is. Back in the day, wow, you could just fill out your order form. You know. Um, the please debit, there you go, you please debit my Barclay card, my trust card, my access card, none of this Visa or MasterCard rubbish back then. And there's a letter from Sir Clive himself, oh there wasn't Sir back then, uh, now he is, uh, there you go. After that, January 1985, Sinclair Vehicles Limited. <laughs> How many did they sell in the end? Uh, and yeah, <laughs> nobody's used them these days, they're <laughs> just a novelty item, but... Ah, oh, well, it was, you know, a decent idea at the time, I guess, but didn't take off. Anyway, thank you very much, Wayne, for sending that in. Brilliant. Yes, I'm in a new lab. Thank you very much, Eunice Kerbin. And hi to all my Turkish viewers. Yes, we're in a Turkish lab. Fantastic. And Eunice uh, is from EK Geophysical Solutions. I guess that's his company. And I'll link it in down below. Thank you very much. So this is his home lab. Check it out. Absolutely brilliant. Hang on, for a minute there, I thought this up here was an old school EEPROM eraser, but I don't think it is because I see like a chart in there as if it's like got some temperature profile thing but it's got a pull out tray like that it, it looks fan too fancy pantsy for a UV EEPROM eraser anyway that's kind of like old school what they uh, look like back in there well the fancy pantsy ones did anyway looks like we've got an 01 scope here we've got a Rigol function gen we've got uh is that like an 01 power so whose power supply is that can't remember. We've got a BK Precision bit of kit, Rigol uh, bench meter, couple of Rigol power supplies, geez. Rigol spectrum analyzer. We've got an old school uh, frequency counter there, but looks of it, it's looking at the EV log, beauty. Uh, we're not sure where it's going. That's an external monitor for 
the another Rigol scope here. So <laughs> no shortage of scopes here. And there's another O1 scope down the bottom. Got a microscope here. Um, that's that little jobby down there. We've got a fancy pantsy fluke meter. And I'm curious about these coils. Anyway, so these are some sort of uh, geophysical thing. Anyway, if you don't know, I spent at least a decade in the geophysical industry, although the underwater um, sonar uh, geophysical industry. Anyway, it was geophysics, but it was underwater instead of uh, land geophysics. So then that looks like a homemade, uh, like multi six channel uh, power supply up there. And this bit of kit up here, this is interesting. This is some sort of custom job. I can't read out exactly what that is, but it's got a numeric keypad and uh, couple of LCDs. Maybe it's just like a custom bit of uh, test gear or something like that perhaps. So old school analog scope up there. Nice. Soldering station over here. Although the microscope's over here but the soldering gear's over here. It reminds me of my own lab like everything's just scattered, moving everything everywhere constantly. Hopefully when I set up this lab again I'll have dedicated stations. That's the plan anyway. Anyway, very cool lab. This is you know, quite decently set up. I like it. Hi to all my New Zealand viewers <laughs> from Palmerston North. Thank you very much, T Noise. So let's have a squeeze what's in here. This is kind of tapes all over the place. Okay, what do we got? We've got a note and oh, this is interesting. Wow, okay. Handspring. Don't know what that is, but that's an, look at that. That is an IBM bank uh, card magnetic stripe card reader like you know I'm sure I've seen that exact model in the banks they've uh, you know usually they've got them like integrated into like the keyboards often these days and stuff like that used to you I used to work at key corp back in the day I can't remember if we had them integrated into the oh geez it was too long it was like 90 or something like that. Anyway, um, the key court made uh, F post uh, terminals. A visor PDA. I don't. I have never seen a visor brand. Never seen nor heard. Of. It look, you know, it looks like a little Palm Three kind of uh, thing. I used to use a Palm Three. There's the reader for it. So cool. A couple of interesting teardowns. Todd's an avionics technician in the New Zealand Defence Force. Beauty. He's having to clear out and reduce in his hoard of scavenged components. Scavenged parts are less necessary than ever in an age of online ordering in onesies and twosies. Unfortunately, he's right. Um, it's just too cheap, easy and simple to order. You know, you've got to have like kits of all your, you know, your through hole resistors, your surface mount resistors, your surface mount caps and just a few, you know, jelly bean parts and stuff like that. But beyond that, yeah, salvaging stuff. As much as I hate to say it, he's probably right. Anyway, uh, a weather station transmitter. Oh, okay. So this was came from a bank, doesn't say which one, it used back in the 80s. <laughs> He's been planning to reverse engineer it for over 25 years. However, it hasn't happened in 25 years, so it's probably never going to happen. I've still got stuff from 25 years ago that, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it would be quicker and easier to order a USB one from AliExpress. Yes, it would, unfortunately. Um, handspring visor. I know you like Palm OS, so here is another one. I found this in the bargain bin. Tricky Dicks. Oh, there you go. My, his first USB device, his novel feature is the expansion port on the back. Oh, there is an expansion header down in there. Wow, that's, that's huge. What is that, an 80 way expansion header? That's interesting. Now, wow, isn't this, <laughs> trust me, this is all metal. No plastic rubbish. Uh, that's built like a brick dunny. Unbelievable. Let's, oh, oh, there you go. Made in the United States of America for IBM. Huh, so... Who actually, did IBM manufacture it or was it just subcontractor manufacturing in the USA for IBM? In Armonk. All right, let's see what we've got in here. Ah, oh, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, 8049. Yep, no surprises. Nice hand taped layout there. Beautiful. Got all the curvy traces. None of that 45 degree rubbish. 1987 date code though. So, you know, late 80s. So uh, got our first custom uh, IBM part number. I'm surprised we don't see more custom IBM part numbers. Uh, that's interesting. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, basically, what's that one? Um, everything else in here is uh, digital. So, yeah, they're just uh, getting the ones and the zeros out.
So I assume based on the analogy goodness around it here, all these tag tants, ooh, evil tag tants. You have to wear the garlic around the neck to ward them off. Uh, anyway, oh, a link going directly over, bodge wire, it's all happening here. Uh, very standard fare for the 80s, um, even in IBM gear. Yeah, so I presume that's the analog head uh, would be going into that. And, uh, I, the, the, you know, why they need the digital stuff to do things I don't know when you know you got a micro in there you probably could have just fed it straight in and decoded it I don't know so fair bit of discrete wiring in here not sure what that is down in there or that some sort of uh, is that like a no it's, it's just grounded shorted two terminals shorted together it's just a it's just a grounding point almost really um, interesting well, hello sailor, look at this. I mean, it's gonna be simple. There's just the reed head and that's basically it. But check out this uh, leaf spring thing here, which just keeps nice even pressure on the card as it swipes through. Like if I lift up that, oh, it does tilt a little bit, but isn't that nice? Wow. So yeah, isn't that groovy? I, I really like that. Uh, that implementation is fantastic. Let me know if you've seen that anywhere else anyone who's done teardowns but yeah I just that's that's great it looks like yeah it's a great way to keep nice even firm pressure on the card as it uh, travels through so there you go and they've got a little divot in there to match the uh, reed head nice Whoa, well done IBM this is an Urcus Instruments weather station receiver okay um, let's crack it open they're obviously connecting up to the uh, uh, sensors and whatnot from the uh, using um, RJ11s there. Oh, we've been blobbed. There you go. Look at that. Um, uh, chip on board, and then they've blobbed it. Um, that's interesting. Usually you don't uh, see that sort of uh, well effort um, in quote marks uh, by you know in something you know reasonably low volume. This would not be a high volume thing, would it? Or is that you know one of those consumer uh, weather stations? Yeah, they might have made. I don't know tens of thousands of them or something like that but uh, you can clearly see that's our antenna oh and ferrite rod wow look at that that's interesting uh, why have they and sun, is that a cap is that a cap buried down in there yep it sure is there you go so they've got a tuned um, a ferrite coil there Plus, what looks like the 433 meg transmitter. Oh no, this is all in one because there's the sensor. That's a uh, that's got to be like a moisture, um, you know, a humidity temperature sensor or whatever. So that's the sensor board, and this is, they got some tiny little coils down on the board there. Check that out. There you go. Itty bitty. They've just squeezed those apart. If they gunk that as well. Just put a bit of gunk in there to separate that so somebody would have uh, hand tuned that on the production uh, test jig and then they've got the antenna and then that goes to and then they've just got a, oh, a tuned cap going down so so yeah that's interesting that's all she wrote it's like an all-in-one thing so this would be going to like external uh, weather vane or you know something like that um, you know to measure the wind speed and maybe a rain, you know, an outdoor rain gauge or something like that as well. So just a sensor interface and, you know, it'd just be running a micro in there, you know, maybe an 8051 or something like that. Um, yeah, interesting. And of course, it wouldn't be mailbag without one from the United States of America. Thank you very much, Manning. Anyway, from San Diego. Like San, I've been to San Diego. Uh, that was interesting. <laughs> And oh, the SBO two five six AL two uh, voice synthesizer chip Archer. Um, none of that, you know that was Archer was the Radio Shack brand. Oh, absolutely fantastic voice synthesizer. I see. I can't can't find. I got in the mailbag like quite a while back. Was um what chip was it? No, it wasn't an SBO two five six. Anyway, somebody sent one in and I was looking for it and I can't find it. Anyway, thank you, I've got another one brand new. Oh, new in box, unbelievable. Thank you very much, got an envelope and more loot inside. Oh, yes, 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 I used to use these. These are the uh, direct etch dry transfers 
for making your own PCBs. This is how we made PCBs back in the old days. I'll show you a close up of that because I can't get near the camera. Damn it. Good thing about having the camera like three meters back, everything's in focus. Because <laughs> I shoot with a constant aperture of like F7 or something like that to get greater depth of field. Anyway, is this a fair income letter? Yes, it is, with something else in here. Instructions for the series musical for what? Brian Manning, thank you very much. Oh, yes, and he says, yes, in case the last one I received in the mailbag was probably croak. <laughs> I've actually, um, yeah, I, it's somewhere in the lab. I'll eventually find it, but oh, new in box, fantastic. So yes, Brian used to use the uh, direct etch um, transfers as well. You would stick them down, you'd have all the different pads, all the different footprints, you'd stick them down on the board, absolutely fantastic. And we have a circuit board demo. Oh, and this is interesting. This is a demo board from Beckman who used to make multimeters and apparently Beckman in the 80s, they had a multimeter that sounded a tone when you were checking the resistance of the component and the tone varied. So this is something that you could use to like a little demo you could use in your, in your resistance mode to play music with your thing. Um, that's that's kind of cool. Anyway, it yeah, the pitch of the tone would change depending on how much resistance the component had is, uh, yeah. Wow, that's very cool. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have any multimeter that'll do a variable pitch when you do the ohms or continuity. Oh? Oh, Brian is Spicy Jack on the EV Blogs forum. Cool. There you go, the Beckman HD 150 series musical band. <laughs> Fantastic. Obviously, I don't have a multimeter that can uh, do this, but obviously it's designed to, look, 1.6 ohms, and then, you know, a couple of rungs up will be 2.4, and then it'll just get higher and higher. And if you've got a multimeter that uh, changes pitch based on your continuity or your resistance value, then uh, yeah, you can get, you know, sweep along and do, 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 and a bugle, what? Wow, there you go, 20K, 35, 43, 43, got some high resistance carbon on there, that's for sure, and there you go, so you'd be able to play different notes, I guess. Do, 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 do. And yep, direct etch dry transfers. This is how you laid out PCBs. This is how I laid out PCBs when I was a kid. You got all these different patterns and you can buy it at your local Tandy store. None of that Radio Shack rubbish here in Australia. And you had all your different footprints. Standard 0.1 inch uh, dip and you had 0.1 inch dip with traces between so that you could get individual traces between pads. That was, oh, that was mind blowing. Uh, round uh, metal can packages, your TO92 packages and you even got bends and stuff like that but you could like bend around with your tapes and made in Holland. <laughs> all the way my viewers from Holland. They don't call it Holland anymore, do they? But of course, uh, you needed like more traces than what you got on here. These were just like, like big power strips or something like that, really. You would uh, get them on the uh, rolls. And of course, the classic ones are uh, Bishop Graphics, of course. They were the uh, Rolls-Royce ones. But the old uh, Ratchack ones, they'd do the trick. So, of course, they just had an adhesive backing on them and you would just uh, peel them off, stick them directly onto your copper clad board. You'd, uh, you know, clean it first, give it a good old polish up and a shine. And then uh, you'd just place these directly on top and then you'd go over with a sheet just pressing them all down, uh, you know, making sure they're all firmly stuck down. And then you'd just chuck it straight in the etch etching. And, of course, um, you'd be left with your <laughs> traces and then you'd just, uh, er, like, rub or rinse all these off. I forget how I got them off. Did we rub them off? We just 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 rinse them and they or put them in some solution and they uh, dissolved off the glue. I think I just rubbed them off with some steel wool or something. There you go. It even came with instructions. Fantastic. Firmly polish the transfer patterns with the backing paper. Emerge PC board. Shouldn't that be immersed PC board in fer ferrochloride? It's ferric chloride. I wait approximately 20 minutes for etching. Clean away the transfer patterns from board with solvent. Um, yeah, no, I think I just used a steel wool. Oh, mint in box. I don't want to take it out, but I will. Oh, geez, was it really 13 bucks back in the day? Um, yeah, I bought one of these back in the day as well as the, uh, not, this is the, uh, speed, this actual voice synthesizer, but they also had an ASCII to, uh, allophone conversion chip, 
uh, matching one for this, which, you know, it made it simpler to just simply send in an ASCII string to it and then to convert it to the required alifines. And it was okay. It was fun. And, of course, you would get the data sheets in it. Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, that, that is a separate video. That's, that has been on the to-do list for a while. Awesome. Because I've already done a video on the uh, Archer voice recognition chip. I'll have to link that one in if I can remember it. Anyway, just search EEV blog voice recognition or something. So thanks, Brian, a.k.a. Spicy Jack on the EEV blog forum. If you're not on the EEV blog forum, what the hell are you doing? Thank you very much, Richard Hensel from Mansfield, uh, OH. Is that Ohio? I think so. Anyway, old school letter. Let's have a squiz. What's in it? Like tiny little envelope. It's always intriguing. What do you get? Like, is there like a, usually people just send a post-it. Oh, five bucks. Thank you very much. Donation. Muffin money. Dave, I found this $5 bill the other day and it won't do me much good. Please put this to good use for your channel. Keep up the great content. Richard, thank you very much. He just found five bucks somewhere in Yankee land. Beauty. Thanks, mate. Although that is the uh, deprecated one. That's the old, uh, the old school one with the old school queenie on it. Um, but, hey. Still spend it direct from the People's Republic of China. People's Republic. Okay. Sure, Jan. Anyway, let's have a look. I know what this one is. Um, and they just raised a... They just had a successful Kickstarter for it. It's an updated suck of the sav. So, arr, there you go. It is the crow pie. Upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out. The... That's up, that's upside down. That's up the right way. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody put it in the wrong way. Anyway, well, if you flip it, I get, you know, if you flipped it like that, it's, it'll work. So, I don't know, which way would you design it? I don't know, I, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have designed it that way. I would rather flip something like that and expect to read it rather than flip it like that and expect to read it. Let us know in the comments down below which one, if I'm right. That's, that's my preference is to flip it like that and read rather than over. Anyway, ages 8 plus, this is going to be fantastic for Sagan, uh, who's 9 now, by the way. Um, so that's a Crow Pie 2. So they raised like 650000 I'll link to their store down below so you can just buy it now. It's just it's done, I think. I, I assume they're shipping. I think I'll unbox this on the main camera back at the bench. And who better to open the Crow Pie 2 kit than Sagan? Because it says age is 8 plus, and how old are you, Sagan? Nine. Nine. All right, let's open it up. Check it out. What, what's it got? Um, I think it says Python, Scratch, Arduino. 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 Micro bit. Raspberry Pi learning. Minecraft. Yay. <laughs> Games and AI. Artificial I think. intelligence. So you know yep. you can program in Scratch and Python, in Python as yep. well. And uh, of course you program Minecraft too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah? Alright, let's open it up. This looks really good, doesn't it? It's better than the old one. Yeah. By the looks of it. Let's try and open it up. Um middle over there, give it a little shimmy shimmy shimmy. Yay! No. Oh, it's all black. Yay. Get the, the foam. Ta-da! Oh yeah, I know this. These are the these are like foldable 3D Minecraft blocks. Yep. They scan and they scan and then they and then they load into your inventory. <laughs> yeah. So they've got little RFID chips in them so yeah. that you can scan them. Looks like TNT. <laughs> All right. What do we get inside? Looks like we got two game controllers. Yep. Um, oh, that's a US plug. We'll have yeah. to fix that. Well, it looks like some wise components. A bunch of components to stick yeah. into the breadboard. Yep. Uh, oh! Um, Power adapter. Yep. Looks like... Not, not really sure what that is, actually. That looks like a remote control plus maybe... Uh, uh, but I don't know. No idea what that is. Oh, there's something in here. Mouse. Oh, little mouse, cool. Mm. Little Bluetooth wireless mouse. And motor, some little. Uh, yep. Oh, that's a, that's a servo motor. Yep. Screws. So a normal motor and a servo motor. 
Another That's a stepper motor. motor. Yep. Yeah, stepper. so three different types of motors. They're the RFID tags. Oh, yep. Tags for the Minecraft blocks. Yep. So they go inside there so that you can scan them. Yeah. Oh, I think those like you detect moisture inside. It, mate, you are spot on. That is a moisture detector. Yeah, that, and inside yep. connections. Yeah, well done. Things. Um, we've got the manual. Excellent. And of course, the most important component. All right. The Raspberry Pi itself. Yeah, this is a Crow Pi. Two, actually. I think it says. Oh, this is weird. Oh, there we go. This is. Easy to unwrap. Now, how does this compare to the form factor of the old one? Oh, well, it looks cooler and newer and more mm. clean. It looks like a laptop, doesn't it? Wow, look at that. It actually looks like a real... It opens up like a real... Lap. Peel it off. Pretty satisfying. Wow, look at that. That actually... That looks fantastic. It just okay. Let's have a look at the ports on that. Uh, there's some on the other side. Too. What type of ports that we have we got there? Uh, I think we've got USB ports there. USB ports, yeah. What else? Um, USB yeah. threes. Um, oh, internet port. That's it. That's it. Wait, right. there's more. There's more. I think we've got a headphone port. Yeah. Another smaller USB port. An on button, and looks like a DC 12 volt battery port or something. Jack, yep. Jack. For external power supply. Yep. All right. Wait, there's Wait, more. all right. Ready for the grand reveal? Let's go. Ooh. Oh, wow. Wait. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it flips upside down. <laughs> so that'd be a wireless Bluetooth keyboard, yeah? Yep. Yeah, you don't need to connect that. Yeah. That'd be... Wait, is that got a charge? It must have a charging port or something on it. Yep, there we go. Charging oh, port. Oh, there. Yep. There, there. Okay. What we got looks like a RGB display. Yeah, RGB Colored. matrix display. Yeah, yep. color. Uh, looks like we've got a. Um, Sorry about timer. the lighting in here. It's pretty poor. Actually, if you want to sit down, say again. Yeah. There we go. We we'll get more light. lighting up. I'm going to uh, peel this off. Yep. Little screen, maybe for display and text or something. It is. It is a uh, text. text. It's a alphanumeric character display. For text, yep. Uh, we've got a breadboard, which we can obviously plug in the components that we found in here. Yep. We can plug in these. A whole bunch of components, yep. Uh, looks like we've got a touch button. That's a joystick, I think, oh, if really? you wiggle it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, joystick. It is. Does it press in the middle, too? No. No? Uh, that's a motion sensor. Hey. <laughs> Microphone. Yep. Keypad matrix. Oh, that's a bit spongy. There's no tactile feedback in that. Don't. There's, there's a, a bit of bit SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. Uh, we got a touch sensor. Yep. Vibration sound, buzzer, step motor. Guess the way you plug that in. Um, screen driver, switch. Oh, switch A to B. Uh, that's a light sensor, we've got a light sensor, we've got a... Yeah, that's the RFID tags. Oh yeah, those ones. And the sensor is next to it. You see the coil? Oh, yeah. in, oh, you yeah. see the coil etched into the board? Yeah, yeah. it's got a coil etched in. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. It's got some seven segment displays as well. Oh, better peel and that off. So another sensor there, there's a tilt sensor. That's a bit annoying, look at that. It doesn't sit flat. Oh, the screen, you got to put like... the... Oh, yeah, look, you got to put the screen I up. I just realised it's a face. <laughs> Two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Look. <laughs> Two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. I think they're just the screw holes, but it does yeah. kind of look like that, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> You're right. That's cool. All right, you want to power it on, Sagan? Let's hope this works. Wait, wait. I, uh, yeah, look, we've got some LEDs down here. Switched on. Elecro. That's the company that made it. Yep. LEDs. No single power. Power saving? It just what? went into power saving mode. Seriously? Press it again. Okay. It's just once. Hello. LED's here are on. Hmm. What's going on? Mm, shouldn't take that long to boot a Raspberry Pi. Maybe I hold it. Yeah, hold it down. Wow, nothing? Oh, <laughs> sad look from Sagan. Oh. Oh, sad. 
lighting in here is ter terrible, sorry. <laughs> We've just got a single light source behind him, that's it. Well, okay, it's off now. Try it again. Oh, also, let's see. That turned. Yep. Maybe hold it down, yep. Nope. And we'll let it go. Okay, it's latched on. Ella Crow. Power. What does that say? Um. Aha! Yes. Raspberry Pi booting. Yes. Oh, should I put this back on? Yep. Okay. Yes! Ah, <laughs> we're where's, in. Where's our mouse? Ah, uh, mouse. Oh, we could have used the trackpad, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Okay. All right, so look, and projects, Minecraft, AI, Python. The first thing I've got is the Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Although you are an expert Scratch programmer. Eh? Not when expert, you... but oh, Python. I when are you done going it. to do your Scratch tutorial? You're going to do a Scratch tutorial video, weren't you? Oh yes, I was. Yes, oh, yeah. you were. All right, oh, so yeah. how much cooler is this than the other one? Way cooler. Way cooler. Why is that? Well, because number one, it looks awesome. And number two, because in the old one, it didn't have some of the components under here that this one has. Here. Yeah, the old one didn't have that. It didn't have that. Um, they didn't have a joystick. Oh, yay! I'm used to it. Yay! <laughs> there you go. Straight um, into scratch. You... Oh, that's better. And what about the screen on it? Oh yeah, way bigger. The way... old one used to be. Yeah, a little tiny top one, wasn't it? The blocks are tiny. I can make a game for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've got time for the no. mailbag video, but maybe we can do a second channel video. Yeah. You're doing some scratch programming. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. Maybe some Python too. All right. Even so, though I'm still, you know, kind of wobbly wobbly on the Python. Still wobbly on Python. Yeah. No worries. Oh, by the way, it's Python, not Python. Really? Yeah. I call it Python. <laughs> it's Python, okay? Python. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the unboxing of the Crow Pie 2. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure it all works a treat. And it interfaces, I think we did a demo last time, but we will just leave this to the unboxing. If you want to see the second channel, leave comments down below. And how do you rate that out of 10, say, in the Crow Pie 2? Uh, 9. That's 9 fine. out of 10. Oh, it's got Java? Yeah, it does it? Yeah, look. Blue J Java. Oh, I, I don't know what Blue J Java is, but, but there you go. Calculator, Image Viewer. Yeah. Oh, Le it's Libre good. Office. Yep. VLC Media Player, Python Games. Yep. Libre Office, all the and the Arduino IBE. Yeah, IDE. Minecraft. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome, Sagan. Well, you can just fold that up, and it's all in there, isn't it? I know. Like a laptop, and you've got all your stuff. And can your wires? Could you? Is there any space under the keyboard between the keyboard and the rest of it? Or maybe there's a little bit of space for some wires. Yeah, you can shove some wires in there and flat them in there. Yeah, Scratch but three. that's terrific. Oh, I love this. You love it. So, how much fun are you going to have with that, Sagan? Out of what? Out of ten? Yep. Okay. Um. A billion out of ten. A billion out of ten fun with the Crow Pie 2. So, ultimate verdict, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, two thumbs up. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks, Sagan. <laughs> and what do we say at the end of the videos? Catch you next time. <laughs>